G'day guys, Matty Extreme Auto, Caravan and Camping, big off-grid setup on this one, Titanium Hardcore. If you guys don't know much about this brand of caravan out there, I suggest you start poking around and doing some research on it because these are an exceptional high-end quality van. The construction involved in these vans are on another level and if you want to know more info, check out Titanium Caravans online. But, not the purpose of this video. She's big guys, a big off-grid power setup over the factory system for this one. So stick around, let's get into these specs. These guys hit us up a while ago. They were getting a titanium built uh, with minimal spec. So they wanted to be able to put their big power system in from us. And we've achieved that on another level for these guys. So they hit us up, they wanted to run their air conditioner. They've got a manual coffee machine, induction cooker, all of the electrics. They wanted to be able to run off grid without having to worry about power. So we sized up a system and we've gone for over 900 amp hours of lithium. There's actually nearly 945 amp hours of lithium here. That's 12 kilowatt hours, guys of lithium premium batteries from Powerpool Australia. There are three of them here. Now, the location for the batteries are right here. This is a titanium built in March this year. The battery system came out in this location. We have just put it in the same location. Um, this had a, an Enerdrive 200 amp hour battery just, just here and we've put the, the new lithiums in the same location. 900 amp hours of lithium, a lot of energy. As you can see with all the Victron fruit that we've done on this, there are three solar controllers. So there's a 50 amp smart solar, there's a 30 amp smart solar, and another 30 amp smart solar. The reason for the three solar controllers is because there is 1500 watts of solar. in the form of three 200 watt panels on this right hand side, two 225s at the rear, and another 225 watt panels at the front here. So three separate strings coming down, all into the Victron charge controllers. They are networked together to form a combined charge. These guys are gonna see some really, really high end numbers. Even in like, you know, the start of August, we were hitting 800 watts. Sun's very low in the sky. We're in the Adelaide Hills. It's another overcast day, so I'm not going to be seeing some stupidly big numbers like you've seen me, guys. Uh, you guys have seen me do in you know other videos around the sort of springtime. But solar's variable. It's the beautiful thing about it. The more you got, the better. So we're pumping in a lot of energy now. We're actually at about 600 watts at the moment. So hopefully I can get it on the video that 800 that we saw earlier. Either way, always variable. Multi plus 12, 3000. 120 amp inverter charger to bring up this battery bank up at warp speed should these guys need to. So if they plug into the grid, they want to charge these batteries up real quick, 120 is going to come in plus whatever solar is on top of that. So we've got combined charging from all multiple sources. The DC charging on this, now until the Victron bring out their 50 amp uh, VE Direct, um, you know, smart charger, which is sometime later in the year, early next year, um, you guys know my go-to, the 50 amp Red Arc DC charger. It's small, it's tiny, it's got a solar input. It works perfectly with the systems that I build, and we've done that. So this has the Red Arc 50 amp DC charger. These guys have a Chev, a GMC, and it will the alternator on that can handle this more than more than enough. So he plugs in. He's got 50 amps coming in from the engine, plus whatever solar will come in, which will be like well over 100 amps, 90 to 100 amps it's going to be big power coming in combined charging so they can run their air conditioner while they're driving keep this van cold pull over don't have to worry about smashing too much energy from it this has instantaneous gas on it so that's not going to run from mains they've got the compressor fridge already in situ so that's always 12 volt it's got mains power as a backup but he'll leave it unplugged what else it's huge it's big so i'm going to show you some rundowns in a second guys we've also done on this some diesel heating so we've done the Urbispatcher top of the range diesel heater for this one. Current model with a black tank and a fuel gauge. So none of these clear tanks that are going to get uh, buggered out by the sun anymore. Uh, this has a black lockable tank. 
with a fuel gauge on top. So they're able to see what's going on with their diesel level for their diesel heater. And it's a much better heat, the diesel heating, especially off grid, as opposed to the um, the rooftop air conditioner, you know, because heat, heat, hot air rises, you know, and you get that dry heat with a diesel heater, um, as opposed to the kind of muggy heat you get from a rooftop um, reverse cycle. So diesel heating we've done on this as well. Uh, we've done the Y-Tie alarm system with intrusion detection. So if these guys are asleep at night and they want to put the alarm on, as soon as you open up the door, it's going to go off. They're going to wake up pretty quick and, you know, it's protection. It's going to grab the brakes. You can't pinch the thing. It's very hard to pinch. So the Y-Tie full alarm system is installed on this titanium. As far as monitoring is concerned on this, we've put the Touch 70 on this. Now the Touch 70 is up here located on the front panel of this overhead cupboard. He does not need to open up the cupboard to get to the monitoring. So all of the information is up here. You've got your solar, your inverter status, you've got water tanks. We've done the Mopeka water tanks on this. This has three tanks. So we've got a one waste and two fresh. So the gray water tank at the rear has its own sensor. The two 170 liter water tanks have their own sensors as well. We've also done the LPG on this guy. So same with the Mopeka sensors, straight underneath each LPG tank. So he can see what his gas level is all on the one screen up here, which I'll show you guys in a second. So all of the monitoring on this to another level. Uh, funny enough, if he wanted to add a Mopeka sensor to the diesel tank, he can do that. But the diesel tanks, you know, probably gonna get filled pretty rarely. Um, the gas on this, uh, guys, is probably for an outside Weber. Um, you know, they can induction quick inside, so that's electric, but their hot water is gas, so that's their go-to. But he's able to see it. We're getting some 750 watts now, <laughs> getting some sun. It's very in and out. As you can see, everything in here is nice and tidy. Very, very neat. There is a label on every fuse, every circuit breaker, every master line that we've added on this has a label. You are able to tell what is what. If a fuse needs to be replaced or a product needs to be replaced, it's as simple as undoing the fuse, the MIDI fuse, removing it and starting again with a new fuse. All the Busman LMI system that we're running here, uh, it's quite expensive stuff, but it is premium stuff. It's fully modular. You can add to it if he adds a circuit and you know, it's, it's just neat, it's tidy. We've added an Anderson plug in a um, area that he's adding a draw fridge. So that's on a separate circuit as well. We've also put two side mounted Anderson plugs. So the existing one through the draw bar for unregulated solar. And we've added another one at the rear for unregulated solar. So he can pump in, you know, up to 50 amps worth of portable solar on top of the roof array if they park in the shade or they just want more energy coming in. You can do that, it's an option and it's there. I love the ability of people um, having that option to have fold out panels because we, we can't pick our camp spots all the time. If there are shaded camp spots that are in a really good location or it's the only location, your roof array isn't going to be doing a lot. So that's why having portable panels is a great option for that. This You can plug it into this at the front or at the rear, however you want and it will complement the roof as well. What I'll do guys, is I'll grab you, I'll bring you down here, give you some close-ups, explain what's going on down here, and then we'll take you up to the screen and we'll turn some things on. Old mate's already made me a coffee, so almond milk, thank you very much. Even putting the titanium cup for me, thanks bloke. So we'll put some things on guys, I'll run the air conditioner. It is five or six degrees outside, so I'm not gonna get that to kick in on cool, so we'll run it on heat. It'll be well over a thousand watts, but at least you'll understand what the system can and can't do, what it's able to run, and what the numbers mean up on the touchscreen. All right, let's do that. So down here, here's the LMI bus. We've put all the charges and high current devices coming in over here. So we've got solar front, solar rear, solar right hand side, and DC charger. So that's all of those products there in form, okay? So solar front, solar rear, solar right hand side, and the 50 amp DC charger for vehicle charging and side solar. And that's the form here. So left to right, so it's easily identified. And on here we've got master 12 volt, main 12 volt. That actually feeds this fuse box down here because it's existing and original. We've just added a couple of extra circuits on this. We've got a you know fan for, um, the area in here, so we've got you know a big inductive fan over there that will kick in based on temperature, and that's all on there. The servo and shunt is there as well, easily seen. So that master fuse controls that, and then you've got the Hydro Pro braking system on this because it's got hydraulic brakes. 
you got a diesel heater fuse here, 30 amp fuse. You got the draw fridge, 30 amp fuse, and another Wi Tai lamp, 30 amp fuse there. So it's all easily labeled and seen. Unfortunately, the labels that um, should be on this hasn't been done from factory, and that's fine. Um, yeah, you can label them as you go along. I believe there'd be fridge there and you know, lights and some other stuff there. Shunt down here, so there's the master shunt monitoring everything, and there's the inverter fuse 95 mil cable guys very heavy duty cable running through this system obvious reasons it's uh, all done to spec there's the multi plus inverter charger uh, factory integrated there's the herb dispatcher diesel heater down there and the vent runs around and that's the outlet there able to be done we also put this in from this actually isn't the diesel heater outlet this is just a vent that runs straight through to his through boot because he wanted a vent um, in the, uh, the closed cavity where he's fitting a draw fridge. So in other words, this is the vent right up high of the external boot draw fridge. So he gets a bit of ventilation in there. That was just a cheeky add-on that, um, that he wanted there. So we're able to do that. Up to the interface, the business end of things. So we'll crank this up now. 960 watts of solar coming in. And we'll go, because it's only like 5 or 6 degrees. What do we go? 25. We'll go the Harrier Plus, so the Dometic Harrier Plus on this, guys, you know they are my go-to, being an inverter-style air conditioning system, so completely off-grid. We're going to run that on heat. And she's ramping up slowly, as you can look at the AC loads here. So I'll leave it rolling on the screen so you can see it. Try and get rid of that. There we go. Leave it rolling on the screen so we can get the, the Dometic Harrier Plus on heat to kick in quite heavily. It will climb well over a thousand watts on heat. Uh, like I said, guys, these guys have a diesel heater. They will be running that off grid and that is the most efficient way to give you nice, warm, toasty air as opposed to running this on heat. But we're gonna run this up to a thousand watts or thereabouts just show up so I can show you how the numbers work and what they mean. So we're still actually charging at that rate. So your solar is semi-consistent if that cloud will stay where it is and we'll watch the AC loads rise and then this number fall and the battery number is falling obviously because you're using more energy so we're still charging at the moment just remember guys fridge is on all the 12 volts on now we're starting to use energy from the battery there we go so five and six amps six amps so with a Where's that 1,000 watt number? There we go. So we're getting close to 1,000 and there we're at. So that's the energy coming from the batteries at the moment. And the offset is here. So we are, there's that cloud again. There's the energy. So that number there is coming off of the total that's coming out of the system. So it offsets it. That's how it works. So running this Dometic Harrier Plus on heat is definitely not advised. You can see the 1,200, 1,100 watt load. But you're not pulling 1100 watts from the batteries, guys, because the solar is offsetting. Being variable, this number will chop and change, completely normal. But it is a lot less than running directly from the batteries. So we're only pulling 30 odd amps. So in three hours of running this on heat, look, it would have turned off by then, the thermostat would have kicked out. You've only pulled 100 from your 940 odd amp hours of lithium. This is free camping and this is where it's at. When you've got so much energy to store and use, you don't really need to worry about power too much anymore. This is a really cool system, guys, on this titanium hardcore. Hello, guys. We just hit 1,000 again. Look at that. 1,040. Beautiful. See, we're kind of getting close to maybe 11-ish, I guess, now. Um, the sun's kind of still poking its head out of um, some clouds and then you get what's called um, you know, cloud flash. So the, the, the power spikes up real quick, then drops back a couple of percent. Pretty normal, but you remember guys, we're in the bottom of, you know, just coming, well, middle of winter, start of August. To get these numbers is very impressive on any caravan. And you speak to people out there that have good amounts of solar on their roof and you tell them that you're getting pretty consistent thousand watts in winter, that's, that's a big plus. That's guaranteed, and the numbers don't lie, guys. It's right here in front of you. There's no guesswork with the Victron setup that we do. We network the system together, so you're able to see what is happening, the full show the whole time. You can hear this ramping up. There's the load, 1,420 watts. So with a 1,420 watt load from this air conditioner, I'm pumping in 1,000. 
I'm pulling 50 amps from the battery. So I can keep going, in, in four hours, I'd only pull 200 from this 940 amp hour system. Crazy. All right, let's shut that down, it's getting too hot in here. And that's if this thing stays on for those three hours. It's probably not, it's, it's not a massive van. It's going to cycle off pretty quick. Cool bananas, I love this. 1500 watts of solar, 945 amp hours of lithium. Big setup for this titanium. Cool guys, hope you enjoyed that. Like and subscribe, I'll keep the videos coming. More rundowns to come. We've got so many things booked in for the next year and advance. I'm actually off on a trip for three months next year to WA. I will try and do a video blog on that with me and the family. So enjoy guys, stay safe, be well.